Hi again, so I'm going to do a character slash book review slash recommendation. Um, I think it's quite timely because in the news recently, uh, entertainment news, they've revealed that Duncan Jones is going to be directing an animated feature um, focusing on 2080's Rogue Trooper. So I thought I'd give a bit of a shout out to the to the comics. Uh, this is a character that I've loved since it came out in 1981. So Rogue Trooper came out in 1981 in 2000 AD and it was written, it was created by the writer Jerry Finley Day and obviously one of the most famous co um, artists in comics for the past 40 years, Dave Gibbons of Watchmen fame. Um, Yeah, so it basically portrays a genetic infantryman who's blue because his body's that colour because he can design, he can withstand the polluted effects of the planet that he's fighting on. Um, so basically, the plot synopsis is it's set on planet New Earth where a war of attrition between two factions, the Noughts and the South, is being fought, and the Noughts are basically Nazis. <laughs> Um, so it's basically the science fiction version of Nazis. So they're a fascist society whom the Tracer General was briefly allied with while the South was a democratic. And the similarities and occasional references to past East Con Earth conflicts, such as the American Civil War and both World Wars, where the Nazis resem resemble Germany and the South is, of course, are the Allied forces. Uh, in an attempt to bring an end to the stalemate, the Southern High Command creates the GI, the Genetic Infantryman, which is this chap here, Rogue Trooper, or Rogue as he's known in the comics. He's never really given a name, I don't think, initially. And they, and they deploy, so there's loads of these GI, the genetically uh, created infantrymen, and there's loads of them created. They all look identical, um, and they're dropped and the, the, gen the genetic bodies are uh, designed to be immune to the poisonous atmosphere of New Earth, where the battles are being fought, uh, so they can fight without chem suits, because the normal soldiers have to wear chem suits, and if it gets pierced, that's the instant death. Um, so they're, they're dropped by a capsule drop over an area known as the Quartz Zone, which is like the north, north and south poles in, on Earth. And it was surprised, it was supposed to be a surprise attack, but it backfired on them. And it's this becomes known as the Quartz Zone Massacre, and Rogue is the only remaining GI, so he goes AWOL. But all GIs have chips on the body, what could be removed, and this stores all their data. So if he can find a base camp, they could use those chips to genetically um, create bodies for for his fallen comrades. Um, so his comrades end up being. He puts the chips on his helmet, so he becomes helm. On his gun, he becomes a uh, gunner. And on his backpack, and he becomes known as Bagman. Um, so that's initially the basic setup for it. Um, I'm just highlighting the first two volumes. They've got these on special offer at the moment on 2000AD.com for about £13.49. And they do, I think they do ship to America as well. Um, you can get them on digital download as well on 2000AD.com and they're a really chunky book and the reason I'm highlighting the two first volumes is because that's for me is the cream of the cream that's the really best version of Rogue Trooper later on it's still good but it's not the same high quality later on the writers change um, John Smith comes on later issues Steve Dillon does a lot of the later artwork and it just feels a bit washed out and a bit aimless but then in eight, 1989 they reboot Rogue Trooper again, and they ha and Dave Gibbons does a Rogue Trooper. Where he paints the whole. Uh, where Will Simpson paints the series, and Dave Gibbons writes writes it, and it strips away some of the. Uh, it basically like gives a it retrofits a lot of what's gone on, um, but that's now viewed as like um, an kind of like an Elseworlds title, because it's still Rogue Trooper, but there's a lot that they changed on it. Um, but Rogue Trooper has come back again recently. Uh, by Garth Ennis and Patrick Goddard and the book collection of that is coming out in I think about two or three months time so I do recommend that, it's a really good read and because obviously Garth Ennis loves war stories, classic war stories so he embraces that element of Rogue Trooper 
Um, so yeah, so road trip's now kind of back to how it was. But I just want to highlight these because the arts on these are by Dave Gibbons, who's obviously world class. Cam Kennedy, who did the Light and Darkness War, and also the two do first Star Wars miniseries from Dark Horse. Um, Brett Ewins, who created Johnny Nemo, and did Screamer for DC, and Colin Wilson, who predominantly moved to Europe for quite a while and became a huge um, artist in France and Belgium and places like that. But he did do initial work on Rogue Trooper, very clean, very beautiful artwork. Um, very pristine, almost like a Mobius kind of style to his artwork. And also Steve Dillon comes on later on in book two. Robin Smith, who did The Bogeyman with jo John Wagner and Alan Grant. Beluda, I think so. Spanish artist or Argentinian artist and Trevor Gorin, who I'm not familiar, familiar with. But Jerry Finley Day was the initial writer. And it's, it's basically like a commentary, a parallel commentary on war as the song says, what it's good, good for, basically absolutely nothing. And these genetic infrastructure men were just viewed as fodder. They were just thrown into the conflict and it didn't matter if they got destroyed because they were created by man. Um, and obviously Rogue goes AWOL, takes his buddies with him, they're all on his... And that's where the story begins, with Rogue going AWOL with his buddies on, on the backpack as a bagman, helm and gunner. Alan Moore actually wrote a few stories in here as well, so it's worth checking out for that if you're an Alan Moore completist. But I'm just going to put my microphone down. I'm just going to put it on a stand, see if it carries my voice. And I just want to highlight some of the gorgeous artwork in it. I would highly recommend these two books. Um, the f other two, they're worth reading, but they're not essential, but I think these two are essential. Um, but they are bringing out in about a month's time and the essential range of road trip like they've done with Judge Dredd and Judge Anderson were they won't be as thick as these, they're wider format and the colour as well they're all in colour, they've sort of got new colouring on them but I like the black and white, I like the original so it's your prefer preferred choice but if you're used to American comics go for the essential one you won't be disappointed because the colouring will be of a high calibre but I'm a sucker for the old school so I'm just going to show you some of the artwork But right from the very first strip, it's iconic. And this, this panel here has been used on posters and t-shirts, etc. So that's Rogue. And his, the big villain is the Tracer General. And like I said, so Rogue's by fighting the Nauts. And like I said, they're basically a thinly disguised, um, thinly disguised Nazis. So yes, yeah, so you've got the amazing artwork by Dave Gibbons, solid writing by Jerry Finlay. I will say it takes about five episodes to get the flavour and feel of him, because he, he's very much well. These are eight, from comics from the early eighties, so it's very much of that time. Um, but unlike a lot of American comics, it's not bogged down by too much speech, and they don't have to like thought bubbles all the time so there's not that chloromantitis but they do let the pictures speak for themselves but the artwork is just stunning as well I mean if you just look at that page and then as I mentioned you do get different artists like um, Colin Wilson this is the guy who's had a became, who became really big in Europe very clean artwork I think he ended up being an assistant for Mobius if I remember rightly, I could be completely wrong, so don't quote me on that. I just want to find the Alan Moore story. Before I do that, I'll show you the Cam Kennedy artwork as well, because Cam Kennedy, I think, is a very underappreciated artist. He became one of the defining Judge Dredd artists for quite a long time. And then he had quite a successful flurry in America for a bit. Uh, but I, I just like me such a solid action artist. But it's funny, I mean, some of the stories is just rogue token to his backpack. 
his gun and his helmet um because it, it's a solitary existence and then he that he leads but then he comes across clutches of soldiers and that's so he starts you know fighting again Doesn't look like I'm good. Let me just pause the video. Okay, so I found the strip for which features on more, as per usual, sods lights near the back. So I think this was in an annual. Um, but like I said, Alan Moore is in the first two books. He's the only writer who appears apart from Jerry Finley Day. And it's drawn by Brett Ewins in the back of this little strip. And it's amazing how much Alan Moore can fit into a story in five, six pages. And he did another one by beautiful artwork by Redondo. Um, and again, it's just a one and done story. Very, very, very satisfactory. It all goes a little bit trippy in that other that story. Very, almost like a. Um, Apocalypse Now kind of flavour to it but yeah so if you're an Alan Moore completist do get the first volume because it's got some nice little short stories at the back by him um, but there's so many fun characters in here like there's a group of um, soldiers who've got a bit rogue called the Marauders who just go around scavenging and there's also two professional looters I love these two characters they're almost like Dickensian in the style you know like in um, Christmas Carol when they have those people fighting over Ebenezer Scrooge's um, belongings when he passed away in one of his uh, potential futures but they are so fantastic very very almost like Mad Max in that cartoonishness um, and the artwork by Cam Kennedy on that is just superb but like I said the big bad is the Tracer General and I just love the design of the of the Tracer General because if you're going to have a big bad make them look villainous make them look evil and they don't get much more evil looking than him he makes Doctor Doom looked like a pussy cat, you know. Doctor Doom's a pretty boy compared to the Traitor General. So, this is the Traitor General. If you look at the bottom panel there, so he's basically been fucked over big time by the war. Um, his face shows all the exposure he's had to the harsh, toxic elements of the planets that they're wor working on, and he's 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 absolutely lethal. He's a true, true, true worthy villain. So it doesn't just leave it meandering. He goes into, he meets the Trace General quite early on. It's about that much of the story that goes on. But so it, unlike a lot of like DC and Marvel comics, it doesn't just kind of go around and around in circles. There's a development to the stories. And yeah, it's so satisfying. I, I must have read Rogue Trooper numerous times by now. And each time I still get a little jolt of pleasure from reading it. So, the second volume, it goes into the history of it goes into the history of Rogue Trooper. So it, it goes into his background of when he was born and when he was created. So it builds on on the on the um, creation of the genetic infantry man. So whereas the first volume kind of like throws you straight into the firing range, this one develops the backstory more in the second volume. And it gets extremely um, anti-war in its message, which is always good. This is why people, this is why it makes me laugh when I get, especially, it seems to be American more than the UK comic readers would say, oh, I don't like comics that are political. Comics have always been political. And if you're in the UK, you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't survive if that's your stance because 2000 AD was political from Prog 1. It's always been political, and Rogue Troop is extremely political. It's a pure anti war pamphlet. Um, but in this as well, there's a real fun character that's created, and, it, and it, she became like the poster girl for a lot of fanboys. They all kind of like had a crush on her. Venus Blue Jeans, which is a female genetic infrastructure man. You can see that now. I'm not sure if she had the mohawk before Storm. I've got a feeling she did, so I don't know who influenced who there. So, so it's quite that's quite exciting that there's another GI who gets added to the into the storyline here. 
So it never gets you thinking, oh, it's the same plot going over and over again. It keeps on expanding little by little, keeps on feeding little taste bits, keep you invested in the story. Uh, just want to show this where he's fighting like a sea beast. Just fantastic. That's why I love the the storyline of Road Trip goes like that. So there's a high point, and there's like a steady point where it's more like a meditative um, episode, and then there's conflict, meditative episode, and then history, meditative episode, conflict, 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 and it car carries on like that. So you never you never think, oh, it's the same old, same old. And I like how even though there's a lot of different artists, the it was it was the same team of artists that was always on it. So you never had that kind of like whiplash of thinking, oh, this is pulling me out. They all had a similar kind of house style. Um, because with 2008, like American comics, the weekly, so they had to keep on top of the artwork. But like I said, they put in, they put in place a group of artists, like for Judge Dredd, was like, back in the 70s and 80s, it's like three artists who like rotated. So you never felt like thrown out because they all have made sure that the strip looked the same, kind of had a similar kind of feel even if even if their art styles were different and very much the same with Rogue Trooper um, yeah it's just a it's a perfect comic uh, war comic even though it's science fiction as well so if you like war comics if you like sci-fi if you like things like the Forever War um, I do recommend Rogue Trooper especially these first two volumes, but I am tempted to get the other two volume because it stops at volume four. I am tempted to get those two as well while they're on sale. Like I said, 2000AD.com. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just a huge, huge, huge fan of 2000AD. It would be lovely if I was sponsored by them, but no, <laughs> it's not going to happen. I'm not one of those YouTubers who unfortunately who gets um, freebies. Nobody loves me. <laughs> It's a hate crime. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, but yeah, I do recommend these books. Oh, like I said, if you're more comfortable with colour, wait for The Essentials, which is coming out soon. And I highly recommend getting the Garth Ennis and Patrick Goddard collection when that comes out. I think that's in about a month's time, or a few months' time. Um, I did do a video. It would be in my playlist of 2000 AD playlist where I looked at the first appear the first few episodes I think of um Rogue Trooper by Garth Ennis just highlighting how it is. Um so if you want to know a bit more about the current run of Rogue Trooper do have a look at that. But yeah that's it. Obviously like I said the film is coming out in 2025. So it's a good time to get on the not the hype train but the quality train and see what the origin material is like. And I don't think you'll be disappointed. And of course I think on the PlayStation um shop you can get the Rogue Trooper game as well What? but I wouldn't recommend it because I swear at my PlayStation to play it because it's bloody hard <laughs> I keep on dying but if you're a good gamer, I'm a crap gamer buy it because you'll enjoy it okay bye, speak to you soon, bye